Before October 2007, when I was found alone, half dead in my apartment, having survived only by some heavenly happenstance the devastating detriments of PCP pneumonia and a necrotizing bacterial infection of the face. Before I spent 12 days of comatose confinement caged up in my stuffy, unsterile studio, asleep, unconscious, my face pressed flat onto a pestilent pillow under the heavy weight of my aching, dying brain. Saliva dripping down my cheek and chin onto soiled, sickening sheets only to invite infection in. Far before a team of California's leading diagnosticians, doctors, and surgeons fought valiantly, yet failed so sorely to salvage my once cute and charismatic, gorgeous gay boy grin. Far before then, a better boyhood me being smiling and sexy, you would have heard me brag in brash whispers of how my unmitigated drug dependency, coupled with my unmedicated, unmonitored manic depression and HIV disease, had turned me into a tweaked out, top hungry, 20 something twink slut barebacking bottom boy. I recall with great delight how my drug induced trans mundane delusions seemed more reasonable and real, more true to me than ordinary and onerous everyday life, thanks to the immaculate bliss and beauty that backlit every waking instant of my insanity. With lean, lanky legs freshly shaven, I once liked to try my way at prancing and dancing in heels. I had the posture of a princess back then, or better yet, of a queen. My legs, once softened and smoothed by a razor's edge, are now covered in patches of naked, hairless, flimsy flesh, only a few layers fine. Coincidence smiles slack-jawed, for the large surgical scar that resmears my sorry specimen of the lower left leg seems to be far smoother and softer far more delicate and ladylike than it ever had been before. Today, post-op 11-fold, with 12 more reconstructions on the books, I have nothing but a torn, tattered tapestry of scars, skin grafts, and flaps of flesh festooning my funny, freakish face. No wonder I've avoided public scrutiny like SARS and swine flu, the plagues which passers-by suppose might sicken me. I've stayed safe, sane, and sober over one full year now. And for what reason? Because, despite the ubiquity of my bitterly unbecoming and brutish ugliness, I've somehow retained remnants and remembrances enough of a time in my life when in my obstinate, obtuse insanity, I discovered the true meaning of beauty. Beyond the awkward aesthetic of the Tina-torn, AIDS-quilted, quizzical contours of my monstrosity of a mouth, I see endless opportunity for elaborate beautification and solemn self-betterment, yet only at God's speed, God willing. Say come out and play with me, but 
my heart's playing hide and seek. What happened to a little? I'm so tough. Ran away screaming at the very first sign of love. So what the hell's the problem anyway? It's not that long.